Welcome to our service for the Nativity of our Lord and Savior. It's important that we all gather together, be it in person or virtually, to celebrate this great event of our Lord's Nativity. Let us begin together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to peace.
let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. sounds of the horn sing joyfully before the king the lord all the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of god A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godlessness ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, 
the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, A Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was a great multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, once again, greetings to everyone. Um, it's great to be with you here, at least virtually. And on behalf of our pastor, Father Tom Stanton, myself, Father Bob Cullen, and Father Joe Ossenalt, and our entire collaborative staff, we want to wish you and everyone in your household a very Merry Christmas. As you probably all know, December 21st is the shortest day of the year and so has the least amount of light. It's behind us now, and the light of day will now increase every day. And this year, the planets of Jupiter and Venus pass very close to each other under the December solstice, creating a great light in the sky. It's a phenomenon that occurs very rarely, maybe every 800 years. Some have called this the Christmas star, maybe providing an explanation for what we hear in the Gospel of Matthew that says, a bright star rose after the birth of Jesus Christ that the wise men followed to find him. 
It was definitely something to see and really a consolation for all of us who have been living in this very dark time. Today we celebrate once again the incarnation of God, the birth of Jesus Christ of the Blessed Virgin Mary and her earthly husband, Joseph. As my mind wanders off to that scene in the manger described by St. Luke in our Gospel, there are two important messages that I want to focus on. And they come to us, of course, in the birth of our Savior, Christ the Lord. In the fields were some shepherds, and the angel appears to them, telling them not to be afraid, because there is great joy to be had in the birth of our Savior and invites them to go and see that infant wrapped in swaddling clothes in the manger. The Christ has finally come, the long-awaited Savior for the Jewish people, to emancipate them, not from their occupiers, but from their sins, which have long been their stumbling block in their covenant that they made with God, to be the holy, to be God's people and his holy people in his image. As they arrived to that nursery, I can only imagine that what filled their hearts and sort of lingered in the air was this overwhelming sense of peace. And that's the first message that I want to focus on in this Christmas celebration this year. We've been brought through a very difficult year, not only because of the pandemic, but because of the violence and division that we have all witnessed in our own nation. And this is what happens when people don't have this internal peace, which can only come when we know and love God as our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, when we have a very real sense of the transcendence in our world. Love and the peace that comes with it is, very, is the very essence of the one true God. And I don't mean at all to restrict that peace to those who hold Christian beliefs, because we all have the ability to know God at some level, no matter what religion we follow. Peace is a universal gift offered by God, and if we have that first and foremost as part of our being, then respect and genuine kindness are the attitudes that will guide our conversations and our actions. By his birth, Jesus ushered in a new age of peace that comes with the reconciliation that, that brings for all and the promise of eternal life beyond the struggles and illness and sufferings that we know in this life. We have to hold on to that peace if we're going to be a civilized world. There's a real peace in knowing we are all children of God, and that's something that can and needs to be shared. And so let's live in that peace. Which leads to the other theme that I picked from these readings, and that is the great message of hope. And this is something that we should all be tuned right into right now, because just when we thought life would never make sense again or return to something that we call normal, in record speed, the doctors and scientists have come up with a vaccine for this virus that has held us all down for the past nine months. That provides us with the opportunity, maybe in six months or so, to shed our masks, protect the most vulnerable from the sickness and death, and come out from the darkness of isolation. That optimism can be an image for the light and the hope that Jesus brought for us on that first Christmas. The people in darkness who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. That was the prophecy that was told by Isaiah and is fulfilled in the birth of Jesus like the vaccine that will free us from the restriction brought on by the COVID virus. Jesus frees us from the penalties of sin and death, ushering in that hope and light in the promise of eternal life. Love has overcome the night, which is definitely something to be celebrated. 
In gratitude, may we offer our gifts of faithfulness and obedience to live as God's people, committed to the commandments to love God and our neighbor. May light, hope, and the peace of this holy joy be with us this day and always. May we grow ever deeper in our love of this great and holy gift, who is Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As a community of faith, we stand together and profess it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day when the goodness and kindness of God our Savior have appeared, let us, dear brothers and sisters, humbly pour forth to him our prayers, trusting not in our own good works, but in his mercy. That the lives and prayers of Christians around the world will lead many to the salvation brought by the infant of Bethlehem, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the infant Prince of Peace will inspire world leaders to work to bring peace to our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our prayer. That our national leaders will govern justly and wisely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those we love who cannot be with us this Christmas and those who are suffering from any kind of illness will be able to share in the gladness of this season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bless the priests of our archdiocese with strength and joy and bless the priests who have gone to their rest with eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God will bless the people of our collaborative with the ability that the shepherds had to approach Jesus without fear and find in him the peace only he can give. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, which is our mass intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, O Lord our God, that the Virgin Mary, who merited to bear God and man in her chaste womb, may commend the prayers of your faithful in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
gathered all above, while mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. All morning stars to Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation of this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Honor in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Honor in the highest. Honor in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bridget and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity our pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us grant us peace grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul you shall be here. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a word of thanks before the final blessing to all who helped set up these Christmas liturgies, um, to Dennis and Lynn, our music ministers, to Bill, our lector, and for all those who so beautifully decorated our church, and of course to Abington Cable for allowing us to be in your homes and bringing you to us. And so we all wish you a very sacred, blessed, and holy Christmas, and of course, a healthy and happy new year. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. And may God, who willed the great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may the God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm fill you with the gifts of peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations grow. The glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. I'm very glad you were able to join us for Mass today on either the cable stations or on YouTube or through Abington Cam. Um, as you know, the, the church's financial needs are constant. Throughout the Archdiocese of Boston, the collection taken up on Christmas is for the senior and retired priests of our diocese. We have one who lives with us, Father Joseph Arsenault, and we have some who help out in our parish, including Father Mark Riley. So we pray that you're able to support the senior and retired priests of the diocese. Weekly, the collection is provides for the needs of our parishes, which are great at this time because we have limited attendance because of COVID. We are thankful to so many who are able to support our parish each and every week. And if you are unable to do so, continue to please pray for our parishes. If you are able to do so, we are very grateful your, for your contribution. They are he helping keep both churches of our collaborative opened at this time of great difficulty within the church. So thank you again, and we wish your families a very happy and holy Christmas and a very blessed New Year. <laughs>